Hey guys, welcome to the final installment of the Zenith Portal Tabletop Project. I hope it's going to be a short video, uh, because all it should be left to do is final assembly and tweaking. Uh, so when we last left off, I had finally solved the riddle of the uh, bad reception, and... Uh, did some screen geometry stuff, demonstrated the uh, the zoom switch, and uh, uh, wrapped up with it working pretty well, so I proceeded to start reassembling it. Uh, of course, I cleaned out the inside of the cabinet and the back of the safety glass and the front of the CRT before putting it all together. The last thing you want to do is have any dust, dirt, debris in between. Um, one thing, uh, if I'm curious... Um, well, let me take a step back. Um, putting very heavy chassis into clunky cabinets is not much fun. Uh, best advice I can give you is taste, take your time and be patient. It's heavy. It's fragile. Last thing you want to do is break something that you just spent so much time uh, getting to work again. So <laughs> you got to avoid all me swearing and sweating and struggling to get it inside and the bolts lined up. Uh, we got four of these bad boys underneath. Uh, so there are holes through the wooden cabinet and these go up into threaded holes in the steel chassis. I got it lined up pretty well. But one thing that uh, I found puzzling is the number well, it doesn't light up too well through the hole, but that that's the way it goes. All the controls are dead center. I think this may tie into that issue I saw with the tuner having scoring on the inside of the drum. That so, you know, I went over that tuner, <laughs> believe me, and I did not notice anything being bent or loose or out of whack other than that scoring. But now I'm kind of curious as to the, the number is not, so that, that's how it should be. But when it's locked in position, it's like... It's off a little bit. The reception's fine, it works, it's just the number isn't dead center on the hole. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna mess with it, you know. I mean this thing has had a life, it's got some dings and, and, and whatnot, and you know <laughs> I'm just glad it's working and that that metal cone pitcher tube is still good because they are extremely difficult to find. Uh now as far as the cabinet itself, it's some kind of Tolex covering. I'll clean it up a little bit. Um, I'll wipe a little um, Walnut Howard's Restore finish. We'll get a little color back in where the finish is flaked off in spots, and I'll rub the whole thing down with some Oz uh, furniture polish. Uh, other than that, yeah, there's some paint that's flaked off here and there. There's a scuff here and there. The grill cloth is gotten, well, it's actually kind of, it's kind of plastic, it's got deformed a little bit, so be it, I, I, <laughs> other than to tear this thing apart and recoat, recover the whole thing in Tolex, uh, you know, there's only so much you can do, um, for what it is, uh, I think it's in pretty good shape, uh, yeah, this, this is a shame, but that's, this is just the, there's not even a speaker on this side, that's just a faux uh, panel to, to mirror the other side that has the speaker on it and just over time the plastic is this isn't grill cloth this this is plastic weave it's uh, distorted a little bit and the Tolex here and there started to come up a little bit and a scratch here and there but you know uh, that being said uh, it's not the most durable cabinet finish uh, it's in really good condition uh, especially when you look dead on, um, other than, you know, that, which really isn't that big a deal. Uh, this, this is in really fine condition. This coating is all in good shape. Uh, control, so we have power volume here, we have the channel selector there. And some manufacturers, they, <laughs> they tried to make the TV appear to be simple to operate, so they'd hide all the other controls that are really necessary at times behind here. So behind here we have our horizontal hold, vertical hold, brightness, contrast, fine-tuning, and they, uh, that zoom switch. That one they do expose through a little slot here. I still have to screw it down and slide it back and forth to expand the porthole image uh, up and down. 
this this is for an internal antenna there's an antenna built into the a dipole antenna built into the top of this this is a little variable capacitor that's attached to it so you can help tune in uh, stations of course since that's disconnected we won't be using that but that that's what that's about in case you were wondering uh, so I have one more bolt to put in and tighten down I need to put the back back on uh, but before I do that I want to make sure it still works uh, and I'll go through and do the centering and geometry and make sure that uh, everything is good to go While putting this back together, I noticed that the original feet, uh, they gotta go. I uh, imagine they were rubber originally and it's just all hardened and cracked and the screw heads are basically down to the level of the rubber so they scratch the heck out of anything if this set was moved around. So I went to the Home Improvement Center and found these guys, which look to be perfect. Exactly the same diameter as the old ones, they have recessed screws. So I'm going to go ahead and take all these out and pop these guys on. Works out perfectly. I was even able to reuse the original screws way better than these nasty, crusty old feet. Uh, let's flip this around and then do the other side. Well, something I regret is I didn't check the sound thoroughly before I put this all back together. The peculiarity of these sets that use the uh, 6BN6 tube is there's a buzz control, uh, which is right up front near that uh, bell of the CRT, which when energized, of course, <laughs> was uh, would shock you if you tried to make that adjustment. But then I realized, hey, if I pop the plate lead cap off, no more high voltage. So I'm able to reach in there and make the adjustment and it has a profound effect. It may be possible to erase his most recent memory engrams. That way Degra will never know. As advertised, it gets rid of the buzz and improves the sound quality considerably. If you go too far, you lose volume, doesn't sound so good. It sets the bias on the tube. You get it just right. How selective could this be? Fantastic sound. I built flight simulators for Starfleet training. This wouldn't be that different. It's not simply a matter of My knuckles are literally against the CRT scene. No way in heck you could do this with the set fully energized or with the CRT. I wrote a letter to a few months ago. Her name's Nara. All right. Got it all together. This was sound. Here's the zoom feature. Normal. Got to adjust the height just a little bit. It's not quite going down. A couple millimeters down there. Tiny bit of a shadow in the upper left. Tweak the ion frat magnet a little bit. Didn't see these defects when it was in normal viewing mode. Really, really happy with the picture. But the one thing I have to keep reminding myself, because I've been. Ha! Ah, finally got everything playing pretty well. It was a really good sound. Eliminated that buzz. It was ready just in time nice sharp picture. One thing I have to keep reminding myself though is flipping between working on sets from 1960 and 1948, this runs on half the high voltage of say a Predicta and it's not illuminized so you've got to be in a dim room to uh, really enjoy the picture on this set. Here's the zoom or opera glass feature fills the screen. Just realized I have to do a slight bit of tweaking. Um, need to get a few more millimeters of height at the bottom and a little bit of shadow on the upper left. Didn't notice those defects while I uh, was in normal viewing mode. The owner's really lucky to get a picture tube that's got this much life left. Well, I guess it's a rebuild. 
see if we can find some. There we go. Some black and white programming. Yeah, I'm really happy with the way this image turned out. This picture turned out. <laughs> through all the trouble I went through. I think I'll phone. Awesome. All right, I just got to clean up the cabinet a little bit. And now cabinet cleaning. At first I did a light pass with a Gojo and uh, not much came off. And I was thinking, hey, maybe it's not that dirty. But it does have little white flecks all over it, as do so many vintage uh, items, be it furniture, radio cabinet, or TV. I've heard various theories from insect poop to paint, paint splatters. I don't really know. I do know this though. Um, they're a little hard to get off. And this is rather delicate material, so I don't want to scrub too hard. Um, but what I am uh, doing right now is putting on Gojo and then going over it with a very lightly with scouring pad. But this is not, this is. Um, it's not metal, it's not like steel wool, it's not a Brillo pad, this is just coarse plastic fibers or something. And uh, it is getting off the white flex, but it's also, I believe, taking off a lot of grime, because the area where I've done it, uh, it's lighter in color considerably. It looks a lot nicer. So I think this actually is really dirty. I mean, how could it not be? It's so old, and I don't think it's ever been clean, so I'm just... Trying to do, strike a balance between getting it clean and not damaging it. And leaving the Gojo sit for a while helps a lot too. I uh, don't have to do so much abrasiveness. Uh, but yeah, this actually, <laughs> it is pretty darn dirty. When it's done, it's going to be a nice light brown color rather than this dingy dark brown. Well, that turned out a lot better than I expected. Uh, it turns out this stuff isn't quite as fragile as I initially thought, so that uh, scouring pad with a, just a slight bit of pressure and the go gel really cleaned this up nicely. Got all those paint flecks off. After the deep cleaning, I uh, threw a little bit of Howard's Restore Finished Mahogany on it just to give a little bit of color back into it and finally some uh, cream polish and uh, cleaned up the glass of course with some glass cleaner oh, there she is not too bad for something made around 1949 I think That's going to be it for now, guys. Thanks for watching. It's been a fun, interesting, strange project. On to the next one.